Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Alcorn here. I'm so excited to work with you. Thank you so much for all of your hard work this summer. I'm so excited about all of the work you've shown me and I know you guys are going to be a phenomenal class. So woohoo, I'm excited. I'm lucky I get to teach such awesome kids. Buckle up, we're going on an adventure. We're going to learn all about how to be scientists. We're going to learn about our impact on the environment. And we're going to develop skills that will help us be successful in college and beyond. This is an interdisciplinary course. So sometimes you're going to be like, why, are, why do I feel like I'm in math class? Scientists use math as a tool. So it's very important that our data analysis skills and our math skills are solid. We're going to be doing a lot of conversions. Get ready. And sometimes you're going to feel like you're in a political science class. The environment is very political. And there are many laws that we're going to be learning about in current events and historical events that are going to be crucial to our understanding of AIDS. So what am I expecting of you? This is going to be unlike any other school year. Have I ever taught hybrid before? No, nobody has. You haven't ever experienced this either. So we've got to really work together and communicate as we go through. Um, Every day, you're going to log into Google Classroom and answer the question of the day. Let me show you what this is going to look like. So as you log in, we're going to go to my test class that I created. You will log in, go to classwork, and you will see the question of the day. This counts as your attendance. You need to do this right within the first 15 minutes of class. So here is the question. You will answer it. It is, the first one is, is why do you think people in poorer zip codes experience higher mortality during heat waves? You're going to watch this clip and then you type in your answer, okay? And that is that you need to hit submit. It will look different since I'm the teacher of this class. It looks different, but you'll hit turn it in or submit something. And um, then that counts as your attendance. Then you will go down and see week one, intro to environmental science. This is how I'm labeling everything. Week one, day one. All right. This is, uh, you guys have a little bit more because this is from my CP class, but I'm set setting it up the same. You will answer the question of the day, watch the intro video, answer questions, fill out the getting to know you form. And you're watching the video right now. So congratulations, here you are. And then you guys are going to have one extra video and notes to do. So you will do this and then that's that, okay? Then the next set of work will be released Tuesday, week one, day two, you'll do that. Then, and so on and so forth. So I'm trying to do this by week with the date and with the topic so that it's just organized and really clear. Let me go back here. All right. Hybrid learning method. What are we doing? I know many of you have been to the website and checked it out. Now, what we are going to do in APES is in AP Environmental, we have a lab component that we have to do that is not negotiable because this is an AP course. There are guidelines we need to follow uh, per the college board and Labs are important, and I it I just feel sometimes we will do virtual labs, but I feel as long as we're in, let's try to crank out a bunch of labs. So this is going to be the first week, and you are going to go outside and do a lab. I'm not going to bring you into the woods yet because I know you probably won't be right. <laughs> You're going to be like, what? Can I hide this? Hide tools. Oh, I can. Wonderful. And... Some weeks we might do two just to turn out and get the data going so that we can have the data to work to work with it. So when you are in person, you will be doing field work, labs, problem solving. I think my biggest apes class is seven kids. So we I'm gonna be focused on those kids. Then Wednesdays, we will be fully remote as a class. We will use Google Meets and we will do synchronous learning. So Wednesday at 1230, both of my weeks are period 10, 11, 1230 Wednesdays, your man. Okay. Are we going to do all 88 minutes? We're definitely going to do an hour. 
plan on being there for the whole time. Now, what do you do on the days that are not Wednesday? So what you will do is log into Google Classroom and you will complete the question of the day, which counts as your attendance, very important, and then complete daily work. Sometimes you might be working together on something. Um, you might be doing some sort of an activity. Uh, one of our first activities is going to be biome speed dating. So you you guys might be meeting and like looking at each other's work, maybe doing a Google Meet, but I will. I am not going to be live streaming from my room. I don't know how I can do that. Uh, where we go outside, I guess I'd have to have a drone flying after me. And I just think for you guys to be watching that from home is kind of pointless, especially where I can video my lectures, I can give you activities to do, data to look at. I'm going to be really fast with my grading and turnaround so that you can, um, so that you can reach me and see how you're doing. Now I have the Hangouts app on my phone. It looks like this and you can, well, first of all, emails go to my phone. So when I'm out in the field, uh, you can email me or you can do the Hangouts. And if you want to video chat, if you just have a quick question about an assignment, I'm going to try to have this on me so that you can access me during class. So how will work be assigned? I went over this. So Wednesdays are synchronous learning, in-person days. Okay, all work for the week will be posted Monday morning. This is how it's labeled. Um, you have to answer the question of the day as soon as you you log in. I can't stress the, this important, the importance of this enough because this is a school policy. I need to make sure you're alive. And that question will, it, you're not gonna see it except for at that time, then I think it disappears. If it's late, I'll know, we'll find out, but that's that. Now shop week work, you are going to have work shop week. It will be labeled W1 shop week, okay? So this coming week is week one, the next week is shop week. It will still be week one shop week, okay? And then when you start in person, the week rolls back. So. Uh, the, I'm thinking you guys are going to be here, what, the last week? I'm looking at my calendar. The last week, oh, well, there's this videos for both classes. So your second week of class will be W2, okay? This is an example of our hybrid learning strategy. And I know you're going to have a different method in each class. Each class has different objectives and goals. We have to do field work. We have to get outside. So this may not be what your English teacher or math teacher are doing. They might be live streaming from their room. Um, but please understand, I'm making this decision with the best of intentions. I have talked to former students about this. I've talked to a lot. I've done research. Um, if it doesn't work for you guys, we will modify it. But this is what we're starting with. So if you are the Monday team, okay, if you're coming in tomorrow, if I'm seeing you tomorrow, you will be in person doing your IP in-person work Monday. Then Tuesday, you're going to do the work labeled day one. Wednesday's all remote, okay, so you'll be participating in that. Thursday, you'll be doing the, ah, the day two stuff, Friday, the day three. Now, if you are, a, Monday, a Tuesday person, you're going to start with day one on Monday, then Tuesday will be in person and everything kind of rotates. All right. Hopefully this is clear. If it is not, please reach out. Now, what is AP? And I just TM'd that. Now, AP is a course that is laid out by the college board, which are also the, the SAT people. And they have outlined this class and it is comparable to a college level class. And in fact, if you do well on the AP exam, which is Friday, May 14th, you can get college credit. Now, I have several students who did, actually a lot of my students did awesome on the exam last year. I'm so proud of them. And someone, someone got a five, which is awesome. Um, a lot of people got fours, which is fantastic. And many of these people are actually going to get college credit, which is, a $2,000 value. If you do well on this test, it means that sometimes your science credit is waived in college, or you can skip 
if you're pursuing environmental science, you can skip the intro course and go on to more advanced coursework, which saves you money. Okay. Now, the, who gets, who tends to do well on the exam? I've been teaching this class for two years now, and I've got to say that the people who do, I think there's a correlation between doing well on the AP exam and having a growth mindset. Now, I know you've heard of this, but a growth mindset means students with a growth mindset tend to do their homework. They ask questions. They, if I give them feedback and tell them something's wrong, they try to figure out why and they accept correction. Um, the students who try to um, just sort of get by with their background knowledge because they've always done well in school and they're like, ah, oh, this is easy, APES is easy. I think there's that misconception, even though the AP, the national rate for AP is actually environmental, is much lower than any of the, the other science classes. Only 50% of students get the credit, get a three, four, or five nationally, um, versus the other P APs tend to be higher in the high 60s percent. So this is the hardest science test. I think what's tricky about this is the AP readers, when we're looking for, um, we really read and look for keywords in your FRQs and your open responses. And if you don't hit it, you get, you don't get the points. I was an AP reader. I worked for the college board this summer and I um, graded open response questions and I've got to say a lot of kids got like twos out of 12 was the was the kind of the norm I have a notebook where I scored everything. And uh, yeah, the mode was a two out of 12. And I think students often try to sort of act like lawyers and I, I get it um, and argue their way into a right answer, but that isn't going to happen on the college board. So you really need to have a growth mindset and you need to work hard. And also this course, we talk about rocks one day, then we'll talk about evolution another day. There's a huge amount of content that we do need to get through. But volcanoes are coming. We'll, we'll be able to do lava as a sing-along. I love lava. I love you. So you, um, this is one of my apes classes from last year. Field work is a regular part of this course. We go outside year-round. I, I think this is in like December or January. Um, but it was actually a warm day. Everybody's wearing a sweatshirt. So we're going to track wildlife around the school. We're going to tap sugar trees. Hopefully COVID won't derail that plan. Um, we'll do forest plots. We're going to be going in the woods back there a bunch. Get excited. Water quality testing, which we didn't, we did some with the eco columns this past year, but we didn't do our Merrimack River trip because COVID. So we'll probably just use the stream around the school. What do I recommend? I have links to some of some things from Walmart that are really inexpensive. Um, and you don't want to wear your easies to uh, to environmental science. They will get ruined. Here is one of my former students. This actually got liked by Market Basket when I posted it on Instagram. Um, they were excited. Market Basket bags work. Just keep some in your bag and you can cover your shoes with that. Uh, sunscreen and deep woods off are also great things to have. Now, miss, it's drizzling out. What should I do? Well, uh, you're still going outside. Okay. Now I have spent some time in Norway and in Denmark and I come from, my dad's family is Swedish and they always say there's no bad weather, only bad clothing. Okay, and that's me um, with Jack the donkey. Notice I'm outdoors. I have a hat on. You're allowed to wear a hat on cold days, a warm hat. It's school appropriate and doesn't um, have cannabis on it or something. And you can wear a nice, a nice coat and scarf. But miss, what if it's cold? What do I do? Bear with me while I technology. Okay. Oh yeah, see Miss Ferreira, she's got a nice outfit. She has on my alpaca sweater that I got in Ecuador. And she's got um 
And she's warm. But miss, what if it's raining? You're so mean. What do we do if it's raining? Oh yeah, get the rain boots and the coat out and go outside, you'll live, all right? So what do we need for the class? You're probably gonna fill up a lot of notebooks. Um, one of my students, Sam last year, I think said, and Sam and Erica both had like two notebooks full by the end of the year. Um, I'm not going to dictate how you take notes. I am going to make a series um, or maybe just find some YouTubes on some different note-taking methods, but when you write things down, it helps your brain. Um, you could also do this in uh, docs. If, if, it, if you can remember things by typing them, that's fine too. Um, some kind of a writing utensil. I'm not really gonna be collecting things from you. We're gonna try to be COVID, but you might, I, I might ask you to take pictures of things and upload it. That's what the first week you are going to be writing. Um, down your data, and you'll need to take a picture and upload it. Um, fully charged Chromebook, bring it to school. We're going to keep the question of the day thing going even when you're in class. What is the grading policy for APES? Tests are 40%. They will be administered via the College Board's MyAP website. Now, the tests, um, you're going to have to get used to not getting A's on everything. Um, very rarely do people get A's on tests, okay? I'm just telling you that right now. Um, it, I don't scale the tests and I use all AP questions and they're very difficult, okay? That is how it is. Lab reports and projects, CERs, lab notebook, projects, lab safety, 25%. Free lab questions will be due before each lab. Uh, I'm going to give it to you in person. It won't be, um, you'll be fine. That's 5% of your grade. Classwork, uh, which is work that is assigned during remote learning days, so that like day one, the videos that will go into the classwork bucket. And shop week homework will be 5% of your grade. Late homework won't be graded. Now, you are going to have assignments in shop week. I realize this is a low percentage, but basically, if you don't do this, you don't learn it, and then you don't do well on tests, and then that, that goes down. Okay. Not good. How can you reach me? Here's my email. I have Google Hangouts. It acts like a text message, video. You can even call on that. Reach out anytime, within reason. I go to bed early, I'm an old lady. Um, and also, please check out the web page that I have uploaded into Google Classroom. You're, you can share this with your parents. It's a one-stop shop with the syllabus, agendas, and more. All right, and I already went over Google Classroom. Can't wait to meet you all in person. Bye.